Says no, mister. It's just Higgins, sir. The National Broadcasting Company presents a new comedy series, It's Higgins, Sir. Created and transcribed by Paul Harrison. And starring Harry McNaughton as Higgins. A butler in the home of an average American family is unusual, to say the least. But when the butler is left to the family in a will, along with a Queen Anne silver service worth at least $10,000, that's news. Early this afternoon, the ace reporter of the Daily Dispatch called and made an appointment with Higgins, the butler, for pictures and an exclusive interview to appear as a front-page news story. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Roberts. You're home early, sir. Oh, good afternoon, Higgins. Is he here yet? Who, sir? Uh, the reporter. Is he here yet? Uh, no, sir, not yet. How did you know he was coming, sir? Uh, Mrs. Roberts called me. Yes. I don't understand why he couldn't interview me at the office. Oh, I think I can explain that, sir. Do you, you can? Yes, sir. You see, he's coming to interview me. He didn't ask to interview me at all? No, sir. Oh, probably a cub reporter on his first assignment. And that daily dispatch... The only thing it's good for is to wrap up fish. Fish? Oh, yes, Mr. Roberts. When you open your paper tomorrow morning and lift up a flounder, you'll find me underneath. <clears throat> oh, hello, Philip. My, I'm glad you got here before the reporter did. Elizabeth, the Daily Dispatch didn't want anything from me at all. Oh, you're so wrong, sir. They do want something from you. If they do? What? The newsboy mentioned it yesterday morning. They'd like you to pay your bill, sir. <laughs> Well, I think I'll cancel my subscription. What are you talking about, Phyllis? Why don't you go up and put on your dark blue flannel suit, dear? You look lovely in it. Elizabeth, stop saying I look lovely in that suit. Men don't want to look lovely. Why? Hey, they want to look strong and virile and handsome. Do I say so? That's putting quite a strain on the suit, isn't it, sir? <laughs> I should have stayed lovely. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Say, Elizabeth, where did you get that dress? Um... This dress? Mm -hmm. Well, dear, I... Uh, that is... Well, you want me to look my best in the picture, don't you? What picture? Well, naturally, the paper will want to take our picture. Elizabeth, did you go out and buy a new dress? Oh, it isn't really new. This style has been out for at least a month. So, so on the chance that this reporter might want a picture of you, you went out and bought a new dress. Well, if you put it that way, yes. I never noticed that tie you're wearing before, sir. Is it new? Do keep quiet. <laughs> now, I'm going to go into my den and work. Now, just be quiet out here and don't talk too loud. Uh, yes, sir. I wouldn't give two cents for the story that reporter will get without talking to me. Higgins, he was so excited on the phone, I didn't dare tell him the reporter was coming to interview you. Oh, I understand, yes, madam, but I wish you'd warn me. You see, I walked head-on into a dangerous situation. Mr. Roberts might have gone off like a box full of fireworks. <laughs> and I would have been the punk. Do try to have the reporter talk to him, Higgins. You know how shy Mr. Roberts is. I do? Oh, yes, indeed, I do. <laughs> I'll answer that, madam. Yes? Uh, my name's Wade. Oh, you're Higgins the butler. Oh, I say, you Americans are so shrewd. How could you tell I was a butler? Well, those striped trousers made me pretty sure you weren't the upstairs maid. <laughs> oh, Americans simply fascinate me. You see, I'm English. I never would have guessed. <laughs> How nice of you to say that. I've gotten rid of my English accent rather well, don't you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You've, you've got no accent at all. Thank you. None at all. You could be from Brooklyn. <laughs> What a, what a lovely compliment, sir. To think you feel I might come from the very source of American culture. <laughs> come in, won't you? Who is it, Higgins? It's Mr. Wade, madam, from the dispatch. Mr. Wade, Mrs. Roberts. How do you do, Mr. Wade? Hello. Do come into the living room and sit down. Well, thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Perhaps you'd like some refreshment. Something to drink? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. That might save my day. Good. 
Higgins, would you serve tea? Uh, tea, certainly, madam. Tea? You're going to serve tea? Yes. Will you have lemon or cream, sir? Bourbon. <laughs> Can I have a little more quiet out here? I'm trying to work out a very important legal case. May mean life or death for an unfortunate man. Life or death, dear? A murder case? A divorce case. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Roberts, sir, may I introduce Mr. Wade of the Daily Dispatch? Oh, yes. Wade. Dispatch. Fine paper. Excuse me. Busy, you know. Oh, say, Mr. Roberts, before you rush back to your work, uh, what's your reaction to inheriting a butler in a silver service? My reaction? Oh. Oh, you're not interested in my reaction? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Well, if you insist, now let's see. Uh, uh, better sit down, Mr. Wade, right there. That's it. Uh, uh, comfortable? Good. Yes. Now, now, this may take some time. Uh, yeah, but I'll now, have to give let a... me think. I said, let me think. I, I first heard of my distant relative, Sir Reginald Robertson, in the fall of 1935. Uh, yes, uh, or you... was it 1936? Uh, uh, no, it was 1940. Tommy was four. Yes, yes, that's it. No, fine. Oh, no, yes, would... yes. Tommy is my son. Now, he was four, and I was growing a mustache. That was 1939, dear. It was not, dear. That was when I was asleep in the backyard and Tommy covered my face with wet cement. <laughs> uh, Mr. Roberts, sir, I Quiet, think... Quiet, Higgins. Mr. Wade asked me for my reaction. I take it back. Uh, sir Reginald died last spring, and before he died, he did an amazing thing. Yes, he asked me to bring him a whole water glass full of brandy with some tea in it. That odd. It certainly was. He never had tea in his brandy before. <laughs> I never had tea in my bourbon before. That wasn't what I was going to mention. Sorry, sir. Well, watch yourself. Now, now, to continue. The amazing thing was the will he made. Sir Reginald left his fabulous Queen Anne silver service and... Higgins, his butler, to me. Yes, that's a fascinating story, all right. Uh, could I see the silver now? I want to take a picture. Picture of the silver? Yes. Well, right this way. Oh, very beautiful silver. Very old and worth at least $10,000. Oh, really, Mr. Roberts, we shouldn't allow the value to be printed. Why not? It seems so blatant, sir, so commercial, such bad taste. Higgins, I am not mentioning the value just to brag. I don't need to print the value. I insist. Here's the silver, Mr. Wade. Isn't it lovely? My family has polished that silver for over 200 years. 200 years, yeah. huh? Well, there must have been dirty. <laughs> well, I'll take that picture now. Would you stand back, please? Am I far enough back, Mr. Wade? I don't want to get too far back. I blur so easily. <laughs> yeah, Higgins, he doesn't want your picture. Just the silver. Ah, uh, there, now that makes a good shot. Yeah, I did it. And now I'll take a picture of you and Mrs. Roberts. Picture of me? Oh, oh, now, you don't really want a picture of me. Well, how about a picture of me? I'll just take one of Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. Oh, no, now, now, really, wait. Uh, pictures, they're, they're so childish. <laughs> I'll run upstairs and get my knickers. <laughs> I had no idea you felt that way. But why should my feelings toward pictures disappoint you? Uh, come on, Elizabeth. Uh, why don't you and Mrs. Roberts just sit right there on the couch? Hmm? All right. Come on, dear. Now, just sit here next to me. Oh, all right. If Mr. Wade wants my picture, too. Oh, this is the most modest family. Now, hold that pose. <clears throat> How does the profile look, Higgins? Hmm? I tried the other profile, sir. This is the lumpy one. <laughs> How do I look, Higgins? Very beautiful, madam. Uh, I am an attorney, you know, uh, Mr. Wade. I would say, sir, you were a very prominent attorney, Mr. Roberts. Please, Higgins. However true that is, we, we, we must be modest. I'll make a note of it. Now, steady. There. That should be a good picture. Uh, you might mention I'm a member of the firm of Bascom, Fine Feather, Bland, Span, Whirly, Pinza, and Roberts. Prominent attorney is shorter. Well, I think that just about does it. Beg pardon, sir, but I believe you've forgotten something. Well, no, I've got everything. Pad, pencil, camera, flash bulbs, everything. Check again, sir. Higgins, the man's busy. He has other things to do. I give up. What did I forget? Well, sir, on the phone earlier today, your editor said you were coming out to take a picture of me. Oh, I'm sorry. For some reason, it slipped my mind. <laughs> really, Higgins? I didn't know you were so egotistical. All right, we're all set for the picture. A, a smile, Higgins? Yes, Higgins, a nice big smile now. Smile? But shouldn't I look natural? 
Go ahead and smile. Very well, madam. There you are. Yeah. Well, back to the picture without the smile. Hmm? Got the picture. Why, Higgins, I never realized it before, but actually, you're a very good-looking man. Me, madam? Good-looking? Oh, that's not what my father said about my appearance. Well, he was wrong. You're quite handsome. Can you imagine that? And my father said I was ugly. That's why I've been shaving with my eyes closed for 30 years. <laughs> There it is, right on the front page. Oh, my, wait till Philip sees himself. Breakfast is served, madam. Uh, what is that, dear? The, the morning paper? Oh, the morning paper? Oh, I'm so excited. Wait until you see the front page. Oh, really, Liz. It can wait till after breakfast. Well, don't you want to see it, Higgins? Oh, no, madam, no. I'm perfectly willing to wait and read it at the normal time. Uh, just throw the paper on the couch in the living room, dear, and come on in. My, doesn't the coffee smell good? Well, if you two are going to be so casual about it. But the story's right there on the front page with lovely pictures. Pictures? pictures? I have it, Higgins. Thank you. Yes, but you elbowed me, sir. Yeah. Hey. They did turn out good. Look at that. Doesn't your profile look nice? <laughs> I guess you're right, Liz. And uh, look, my double chin doesn't show. Is my picture in there? Sir? Oh, excellent. Photographs of both of us. And you look just beautiful, dear. Is my picture in there, sir? Oh, now, Philip, you're just saying that. Oh, no, no, I mean it. You're just as beautiful as the day I married you. Is my picture in there, sir? Your hair looks good, dear. It's so nice and wavy. Elizabeth, that's a wrinkle in the paper. <laughs> Does the article say anything about me, sir? Madam? Sir? Anyone? <laughs> Higgins, stop leaning on me and peeking over my shoulder. So sorry, sir, but I've mislaid my periscope. <clears throat> Higgins, I didn't want to make an issue of this yesterday, but... Uh... Well, I was a little embarrassed at the way you pushed yourself into the conversation with that reporter. As a matter of fact, I noticed that, Mr. Roberts, too, yes. I pushed and I pushed, pushed. I still couldn't get in. <laughs> well, listen to this article. The collection of Queen Anne silver was breathtaking in its beauty. Its value of $10,000 placed on it by Mr. Roberts seemed modest. Much too low for artwork of such excellent craftsmanship. Is my picture in there, sir? Here's the part about you, Higgins. The silver was brought to America by Sir Reginald's personal representative, a Mr. Miggins. Uh, Mr. Miggins? <laughs> <laughs> he put a Mr. in front of your name and misspelled it. <laughs> Philip, you're not being very nice. <laughs> Miggins? Miggins? Have you ever heard of such an absurd name? I'm terribly sorry, Higgins. Oh, that's all right, madam. I don't mind. Not really. Higgins... I owe you a lot for making that front page article possible. And I owe it all to you, Miggins. <laughs> Miggins. Miggins. Mig Asinine, that's what it is. Where are you going, Higgins? To cancel my order for 30 copies of the morning paper I was going to send back to England. I turned out to be nothing but a misprint. <laughs> Are you there? Oh, oh yes, madam. Just a moment. Mrs. Roberts, a call for you, madam. Oh, thank you, Higgins. I'm leaving for Mr. Roberts' office now, madam. If you'll excuse me. He asked me to bring down his briefcase. All right, Higgins. Hello? Oh, yes, Myra. The silver service. Oh, yes, wasn't that a nice article? How many women called you... Sixty-five? But if they come over one at a time, it'll take a year. What? Show the silver at the club and let them all come over there to see it all at once? Why, Myra, that's a sensational idea. Yes. I'll come over with it right away and invite everybody. I'll leave as soon as Tommy comes home from school. He can help me carry it to the car. Goodbye, Myra. And thanks. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, Miss Perrin? Who? Oh, Higgins, yes. Yeah, well, send him right in. Uh, yes. Hey, come right in, Higgins. Come on in. Uh, yes, sir. Very good, sir. My word, sir. Your office is very impressive. <laughs> oh, just a place to work in. I say, in all these books... Well, there must be thousands of them. Oh, really not so many, Higgins. Just a few legal books that I use constantly. You, uh, you use them all the time, sir? Ah, this one here looks rather interesting. <laughs> Seems rather dusty. <coughs> Put it back, Higgins. <laughs> I say, you mustn't have used this one for a day or two. <laughs> Did you bring my briefcase? Uh, yes, sir. Briefcase. Here you are, sir. I want to get something out of my desk here. Here. I uh, bought a few copies of the Daily Dispatch. A few copies, sir? There must be at least 25, sir. Uh, 25. Uh, yes, that newsboy was such a good salesman. <laughs> Higgins, I want to tell you again how much I appreciate that article. Even Bascom congratulated me. Prestige for the firm. That sort of thing. Naturally, I wouldn't have thought of that angle. I'm positive that never occurred to you, sir. Uh, no. Uh, yes, Miss Perrin? Who? Oh? Uh, Mr. Lang? Never heard of him. Tell him I'm busy. Yeah. Tell him I'm... Where did you say he was from? The Department of Internal Revenue Income Tax Division? Yes. Send him in. Now, why would an income tax man want to see me? I made up my return correctly. Well, practically correctly. <laughs> I, I didn't make any mistakes. I, I, I got it. Oh, oh, he's here to make a refund. I thought I'd paid too much. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> Mr. Roberts? Yes, yes, come in, Mr. Lang, come in. Well, this is a new one. I'd almost say you were glad to see me. Oh, 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 oh I am. Yes, sir. I, I'm very glad. Mm, shall I leave, Mr. Roberts? Are uh, you Mr. Miggins? My name is Higgins. I'd like you to stay, Mr. Higgins. There's no Mr., sir. It's just Higgins. Now, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get down to the reason for your coming here. All right. right. It's a matter of money, Roberts. Tax money. Oh, I figured that's what it was. <laughs> How much is it? In round figures. Round, square, triangular. Who cares as long as it's money? Well, I'd say it was about uh, $2,000. Two? Uh, $2,000? You're going to pay me $2,000? Pay you. $2,000? Oh, 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 brother, I, I've hit the jackpot. Wait till I tell Liz. Yes, oh. if the evaluation on the Queen Anne Silver Service is correctly <laughs> stated in the paper... You owe the government roughly uh, $2,000. <laughs> $2,000? Uh, I, I owe the government. <laughs> On the silver, sir. Oh, no. Oh, no, that, that's not, that's impossible. You're, you're kidding me. I knew, sir, we shouldn't have put the value in the paper. $2,000, Mr. Roberts. And we're very grateful for the article on the front page of the dispatch. Sure, that's a lot of nonsense. There's no tax due on that silver. It's, it's an inheritance. The silver service was a gift, and any taxes paid were collected by the British government. Offhand, I'd say you owe the United States government $2,000. My word, how offhand can you get? $2,000. Now, I'd like to go out to the house this afternoon and uh, place an evaluation on the silver. I'm busy this afternoon. All right. But you know how the interest piles up on these delinquent tax bills, eh? That's what I said. We'll go out this afternoon. Right now. All right. Fine. I'll uh, wait for you in the outer office. Higgins. Sir? Oh, what a stupid thing to do. Giving the value of the silver right in the paper. I suggested, sir, you not print the value. Why didn't you put up an argument? I didn't want to be objectionable, sir. Yeah, well, you aren't exactly popular right now, you know. <laughs> Printing the value right in the paper where the income tax people could read it. Yes, they... Oh, or a burglar. The guy would know just what to steal and he'd have a picture to show him where it is. Mr. Roberts, you... Why, sir, you don't think you... You can't possibly believe... Of course, the silver's at home. How could anybody steal it with Mrs. Roberts right there? Oh, dear, I'm so relieved. Let's go home. What about the briefcase, sir? Twenty-five newspapers in it. I'll... I'll go out and sell them. Newsboy Roberts needs the money. 
Get your daily dispatch. Get your daily dispatch. <laughs> Higgins, make some coffee, will you? I've got an awful headache. Headache, sir? What on earth from? Straining your eyes? Yes, counting $2,000 I haven't got. Which way is the silver, Roberts? Right this way. We keep it in the dining room. Stuff's over 200 years old. Worn. How much could it be worth? Uh, is it Miss Buffet right here? Yes, in the sideboard. Just just open the cabinet there. In uh, here, you said? Sure, right in there. It's right here. Holy mackerel. Higgins, come out here. Uh, yes, sir. What is it, Mr. Roberts? What is it, sir? The silver. The silver is gone. Gone? Why, that's absurd. We, we've been robbed. The burglar you were talking about. You say Mr. Roberts mentioned a burglar, Higgins? Yes, sir. Mr. Roberts said that the story about the silver might tempt a burglar to rob the house. And he did. Our beautiful silver. Stolen. Gone. Mr. Roberts, control yourself. Don't carry on, sir. Gone. All gone. Hmm? Gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just isn't here anymore, is it, Mr. Lang? I'm sorry, Roberts. That's a big loss. <laughs> it's a terrible loss. Now I won't be able to pay the tax on it, will I, Mr. Lang? Well, I can't very well tax you for something you don't have. Exactly. It's nice to have met you, Mr. Lang. Now, would you like to leave me alone with my sorrow? <laughs> All right, Roberts. All right. No tax. Uh, that is, if it was stolen. Look around. Look around. You don't think I made it disappear, do you? Oh, Mr. Roberts, you didn't do a thing like that, sir, did you? And you keep quiet. You caused enough trouble for one day. I hope it was stolen, Roberts. If you got rid of it to avoid payment of tax, <laughs> that's a deliberate attempt to defraud the government and punish you by a jail sentence. Jail? Jail? Mr. Roberts, you'll look simply hideous in stripes. <laughs> Sorry about the whole thing, Roberts. The uh, government could have used the money. Higgins? Yes, sir? Oh, Higgins, we're... We're in trouble. Trouble? Yes. If it was stolen, we've lost that beautiful, valuable silver, and... If it wasn't stolen... You go to jail. Oh, we're in trouble. Yeah. We, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else happens to me because of that fool article you gave that reporter, I'll make you sit on top of the kitchen stove and I'll turn the pilot light up high. <laughs> Anybody at home? Anybody here? We're in the dining room. Well, bring it in, Tommy, and we'll put it away. I had Tommy help me. The silver is just too heavy for me to carry all by myself. The silver? <laughs> Well, what are you both standing there looking so foolish for? You didn't think a burglar had stolen the silver, did you? Yes! Oh, how childish. Put it right on the sideboard, Tommy. Boy, this stuff is heavy. You'd think the silver was made out of lead. Elizabeth, I can't stand any more shocks today. Where did you have this stuff? On display at the women's club. All the girls wanted to drop over and see it after they read the article in the dispatch. So I took it over where they could all see it at once. You had the silver service at the women's club, madam, all the time? Oh, all oh, that article in the paper. How could one thing cause so much trouble? I'll get it, sir. Oh, Mr. Lang, so you've come back. Yes, I'd like to speak to Roberts again. Is he still in the dining room? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. I mean, he, uh, I think he's in the kitchen now. That is, he, he's left town, sir. Are <laughs> <laughs> hey, you worried? What's going on here? Maybe I'll better see for myself. Mr. Roberts, sir. Make for the hills! Well, Roberts, I would... Oh. Oh, so this is why Higgins was so upset, huh? The, uh, burglar returned the silver, eh? Oh, well, yes. After all, my wife took it down to the... Well, the, 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 well, the silverware. I... Philip, I... who is this huh? man? And what is he talking about burglars for? Uh... This is Mr. Lang, dear, the tax man. I I did tell him the silver had been stolen. Mr. Roberts, sir, don't say a word until you talk to a lawyer. I am a lawyer. 
Oh, yes, of course, my... Isn't this a confusing day? <laughs> well, Roberts, I'll evaluate the silver right now for tax purposes. And, uh, well, we'll see if we can make it a fine for attempting to defraud the government instead of just a jail. Oh, well, my... My wife took the silver down to the women's club to show it and... Well, she didn't tell me about it. That, that's all. It isn't that right, dear. Tell him, dear. That's right. I did take it down, and Philip knew nothing about it. Oh, Mr. Roberts, all this trouble to think when I first arrived, you weren't going to keep the silver at all. Or me. Yes, and I've had the feeling ever since that I made the wrong move. Yes. <laughs> if you had sent me away, I would have taken the silver with me. Yes. What a happy thought. Higgins. What's wrong now, sir? Oh, you've done it. You've shown me the way out again. I have, sir? Yes. No, this has a touch of genius about it. Really? Mm. Oh, Mr. Lang. Yes? There's a question or two I'd like to ask you. Fire away? <laughs> oh, I'll fire, never fear. Isn't the legal description of a gift that which is given to be owned and used by the recipient freely and without condition... That it is owned, can be abused, destroyed, or sold without recourse. That is right. <laughs> Good. Then this silver is not taxable. According to the specific conditions of the will, it says that the silver is mine to use only if I also give employment to Higgins, and only as long as he is in my service. <laughs> is, um, is that right, Higgins? Ah, completely, sir. There's a copy of the will right here in the desk. There you are, Mr. Lang. Not only that, but Higgins' salary is paid by the will condition. Correct again, sir. Well, maybe you're right, Roberts. The will proves it. I uh, can't collect tax under those circumstances. Sorry I caused you so much trouble. Oh, that's all right, Lang. I hate to see the income tax division lose any money. Why, that's a very unusual attitude, Roberts. Thanks. Well, goodbye. See you again sometime. Higgins? Yes, sir. Come here. Yes, sir. Oh, Higgins, you've done it again. You gave me an idea that saved me $2,000. Well, is everything all over now? Uh -huh. Yes, dear. Everything's all over, thank heaven. All right. Now, it's going to be nice and quiet around here. I'd like someone to explain what happened. Explain what happened? Well, now, let's see. Uh, do you really want to know, Elizabeth? No. I probably wouldn't understand. Good. And I think the details are a little hazy anyway. You know, I'm so fond of Americans, you know. They're a lot like the British. They stick to a clear-cut, simple situation with bulldog determination until they've got the whole thing all muddled up. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, life with you, sir, for the past three months has been exciting, amusing, satisfying, and wonderful. Oh, thank you, Higgins. There's only one thing that amazes me, sir. How did I live through it? <laughs> this has been It's Higgins, Sir, a new comedy series starring Harry McNaughton with Vinton Hayworth, and Vera Allen as Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. Charles Neville as Tommy. It's Higgins, sir, is directed and transcribed by Paul Harrison and written by Brick Bullards. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This has been our last show. We've enjoyed the past three months with you and hope to return to the air soon. If you've enjoyed our show, why not write us and let us know, care of NBC New York City. This is Harry McNaughton saying good night and God bless you. Join Jack Pearl and Mimi Benzel next on NBC.